Hey everyone, it's Robert Brennan. Now if you're like me, you're hoping that throughout the winter you're going to be able to grow some food inside. And I've just put together this desktop aquaponics system to hopefully do that. So basically what it is, is we're going to have the same thing as like a flood and drain hydroponic system, but instead of having to use nutrients and uh, fertilizers that we buy at the store that are already made, what we're going to do is we're going to actually use fish waste to create the nutrients for the plants. So stay tuned and I'm going to show you guys how I made this system. Hey everybody, I'm Robert Brennan. Today I'm going to show you a little project that I've been thinking about for a while. I have this old desk that I haven't used for ages and I really wanted to do something with it. So I decided that I'd build an aquaponic system, just very small, utilizing very little space in your house, but you're going to be able to grow great vegetables that you can use in your cooking anytime. Alright, so first thing we're going to talk about is the grow bed. What the grow bed is going to do is it's going to hold the hydroton, it's going to hold some of the water that floods and drains, and it's going to hold the plants. So what I got was this little tote from IKEA. You can see it's, uh, it's quite a thin profile and it is 8 inches deep which is going to be perfect. You want at least 6 inches but uh, 1 foot is optimal but 8 inches for our purposes for a mini system is going to be great. And this is going to hold 55 liters of water and grow bed. So, um, what we have to do though is we're going to need to create some sort of drainage on this. We're going to need to have a drain and a fill pipe. So let's get started with that. So I got this bulkhead off eBay and essentially what that's going to let me do is attach a hose to the bottom here and it's going to create a watertight seal at the bottom of this tote and allow the water to come up through here and then drain back. So what we need to do is create a hole for this and if you look at the bottom of the tote I got, you can see that there's quite a few ridge lines and support structure, okay? We don't want to drill into that. Basically what we're looking for is we're looking for a flat area to drill the hole into. So what I have is a one and a half inch hole saw and what I'm going to do is drill a hole into one of the flat corners and that's where I'm going to attach my bulkhead. So I have my flood and drain hole drilled out, but I'm also going to need a separate hole for a separate bulkhead on this side to allow for an overflow. Okay, so we're going to have to make some modifications to the desk. So I need to put a hole in the desk for one of the bulkheads on this side and one of the bulkheads on this side. So what I'm going to do is just place the unit right where I want it just like that and then using the same drill bit that we used to cut the holes in the first place I'm gonna go ahead and cut a hole right into the desk so now you see we have the hole in the table and that's gonna line up with the hole in the grow bed and now we can add our bulkhead alright so that's what we're looking for we wanna have the bulkhead nice and tight with the pipe coming out and we should be able to just fit that right over the holes that we drilled into place like so. Okay so I have some 3 quarter inch PVC pipe that's been threaded on one side. You can find this in the irrigation section of Home Depot. So what I'm going to do with this pipe is create a maximum fill level for my grow bed. I want it to be just below a few inches from the top. So I'll find where I want that to be and then I'll go ahead and mark it out. Okay, so I have that marked out where I want it to be and then I'll just take my pipe cutters and we'll go ahead and cut the pipe. Now we're going to attach the pipe we just cut and attach it to the bulkhead and this will be our fill level. And that'll just screw right into the bulkhead top. Just like so. So now as the water fills the grow bed, once it reaches this level, it will overflow and go back down to the fish tank. Okay, so I took a piece of ABS and I cut lots of little holes in it. This is going to allow the water to fill in through this. And what this is going to act as is a little trap to keep any of these little pieces of hydroton going into the pipe system. 
Okay, so I have a bag of hydrotin here. It's just a expanded clay pellets. And we're gonna go ahead and use that to fill our system. All right, so we finished the top and now we need to focus on the plumbing below. So what you can see here, you can see all the piping that we have coming through the holes that we drilled in the top of the desk. Now that's gonna feed below into this tote where we're going to keep the fish. So right now what we need to do is build the piping system that's going to come from the pipes just below down into the bottom of the fish tank. Alright and now we're going to go ahead and attach the overflow lines. Now I wanted to connect these two buckets and the reason for this is I want to maintain the same water level on both sides. This will create a sump between the two buckets. So we'll have one with a fish in it and then what will happen is we'll actually pump out the water from the second one and this will allow the fish waste to sort of transfer from one to the other and it will also maintain more or less an even level of water for the fish inside this one so they don't experience falls and drops as the water's pumped up to the system. So to do that, we're gonna just take the hole saw again and cut a hole in each of the buckets and then we're gonna add these uh, bulkheads to each of the buckets as well and then that'll allow us to connect both of them through hose. So we'll just go ahead and cut on the same side at the same height pilot holes for the bulkheads. And now we can just go ahead and add our bulkhead on either side. And now we can connect those two points just using a piece of three quarter inch clear plastic tubing. And now we have both buckets connected. So I'm gonna do another one in the back as well. And uh, then we'll move on from there. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna be doing is building the fill manifold. And what I have here is just a simple ball valve and what that's going to do is just be able to give us the ability to regulate the flow of water. This will help us adjust how fast the tank fills. We're going to go ahead and attach our fittings. So we have half inch fittings on either end. So we're going to go ahead and add this reducer and this is going to allow us to go from the wider black uh, half inch to the thicker diameter half inch clear tubing. And now we can attach this manifold to the pump. So now we have the ability to regulate the flow coming out of the pump through the ball valve. Okay, so I added this T-joint to connect these two pieces of hose together and that's going to be for our fill system, so we're going to go ahead and attach that. Just like so. Next I've measured a piece of this tubing and that will go from this T-joint section here all the way to the back where the fill valve is. So we'll go ahead and attach that. Here you can see I did the same thing with the returns and just getting all the flow of the two returns back into one single one. Lastly, I'm going to add an air pump and an air stone to each of the two buckets. This will just provide aeration. Alright, so we want to work on our timing system. And basically what I have here is a timer that works off a 15 minute increment. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that the whole flood and drain cycle takes a total of about 30 minutes. So what we're going to want to do is run the pump for 15 minutes and then have it drain and take about another 15 minutes. So we're just going to time the system right now and see how long it takes to flood and drain. So what we've done is we figured out on the ball valve how far to turn it to allow it to take a full 15 minutes to cycle the water. Okay, we just started a cycle and it's kind of hard to see, but you can see the little shimmer of water just starting to fill the bed now. So you can see the water is just about to come up to the top of the cycle. And there it goes. 
So now that it's reached its fill line, it's going to start draining back down to the bottom of the tank. So you can see now it comes down through this fill tube and drains into the fish tank. Okay. Now that's going to fill up and as it fills up, it's going to move over and across the tubing into the sump. Here you can see it draining into the sump. Okay, so at this point we basically have the system ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the timer for 15 minute intervals uh, four times a day. And basically what I'm going to do at that point is just test in between the intervals and feel if it's still moist at about uh, an inch or so down below. If it's still moist, then that means that we have perfect timing. Basically what we're looking for is we don't want it to be dry about an inch or so below. So if it's drier, then just set another interval, right? So it might be five times a day. It really is just going to depend on the humidity in your house and uh, how big the plants start getting, whether they start sucking all that water up, okay? Now, so speaking about plants, that's kind of the next part about the system. How do we get fish into the system? How do we get plants into the system, right? That's what everybody wants to know. But there is a little something called cycling, which is going to take approximately three to six weeks, and you're going to have to be patient on that. But I'm going to outline that in detail in the next video. So go ahead and subscribe to me, and you'll get the video when it comes up. I'm hoping to have it done in the next two weeks. And um, yeah, feel free to subscribe to me. Feel free to like this video if you like the video. Otherwise, we hope to see you soon, and uh, happy growing.